So everyone, iPadOS 17.4 has released to the entire public, and in this video I want to talk about everything that Apple added because we did get a bunch of the features that came from iOS 17.4 down to iPadOS 17.4, but Apple also omitted a little bit because Apple likes to do that with iPadOS. But without further ado, let's talk about iPadOS 17.4 and then maybe look forward to what eventually is coming, which is a new iPad. But let's get into it. Well, all right, everyone, let's get right into this video. And the first thing that I'd like to do is actually check out to see exactly what firmware update we're on or what software update we're on. And as you can see, we're on 17.4, 21E217. So this is the release to the entire public, and we did get some new additions, which we're going to go over right now. So the first thing iPadOS 17.4 gave us was a brand new widget. So if we hold down and add a widget, we got a brand new clock widget. So if we go over into here. I believe it's called City Digital. So here it is, City Digital, and what's nice about this is that it is customizable. So actually, if you long press on here, you actually get a couple of options. You can actually edit the widget itself, and you can actually change the time based on the city. So if I want to do maybe Copenhagen, Denmark, I can do that. And then it'll give me the time, and not only that, it'll then adapt based on the time of day. So you can see, obviously, in Copenhagen, it is nighttime, 7.06. But if I go into, let's say again, back to Cupertino, press Edit, go back to Denmark, go to, let's say, Columbus, USA, It'll show that it is a light colored because it is corresponding to the time of day because it is one o'clock in the afternoon in Columbus. So that is something that's brand new to iPadOS 17.4. The next thing that we got with iPadOS 17.4 is brand new emojis. So if we go into a brand new note and we look at the notes right here, if we actually press enter, enter, then press in the actual world button, there's six new emojis. And the first one is going to be a lime emoji. So you can see that we do actually have a lime right here, which is cool to see. Then we also have a brand new Phoenix emoji. So if I type in red bird or something, you can see that it shows up right there. We have something called a breaking chain emoji as well. So if I type that in, we also have a shaking head emoji, which not only shakes side to side, but also up and down. So that's two different ones right there that we can click on. So that's five. And then last but not least, we do have the mushroom emoji. So if we type in mushroom, we do have this one, which we've had for a while, but this is a brand new kind of normal looking mushroom, which is the brown mushroom, which is great to see. But again, those are the six emojis that we got with iPadOS 17.4, all welcome additions. My favorite one probably is a Phoenix one, which is great to see. Now, one of the coolest things about iPadOS 17.4 has to be the transcriptions that came over to the Apple Podcast application. So if you go into Apple Podcasts, the first thing that we notice that's different about it is that we actually got a new name for this tab right here. So here it says home right now, where it actually used to say now listening. So that's something to take into consideration. But then also we actually got full live transcriptions with the same format as you would get with the lyrics on Apple Music. So if you go into one of these podcasts right here, so this is 9 to 5 Mac Overtime with myself and Jeff Benjamin, if you guys do want to check that out. But if we press resume here and start to listen and then tap on here, we have a few options. So first you can see that it is showing you the live transcription in real time. So it's populating and highlighting the actual verbiage right as it's going along, which is awesome. And honestly, and it's been extremely accurate, which is awesome. I thought that maybe it would kind of misstep a little bit depending on accents and things like that. But for the most part, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, it gets your words correctly. And then also you can actually click on the three dots right here, press view transcription or view transcript, and you get kind of like a written out word memo or word doc version of it that you can then kind of manipulate and copy and paste and things like that. So you can highlight and maybe copy sections of it if that's something that you want to do. And then also with the music application, they did the same exact thing when it comes to actually changing the tab name, where now it says home instead of now playing. And then also you get to see that there's something new right there which is great to see, which is the new monthly replay. And then the listen now is now home, like I mentioned earlier. Another quick thing to talk about for actual emojis is that, yes, we got the six new emojis like I mentioned earlier, but if you guys go to the full body emojis right here, which again, I don't really use them too much, so I didn't really notice, but apparently now they can actually switch directions. Whereas before they were all facing left, but now if you long press, you can actually see that they do change directions. So you technically have 18 new emojis on here, even though they're relatively the same, just looking at a different direction. And now something awesome that came from an accessibility standpoint in the settings is if you go down to your Siri settings where it says Siri and search, and then go to where it says messaging with Siri, we've always been able to do the send messages piece. So automatically send messages to send messages quickly without Siri asking you to confirm, you can always turn that on. But now, depending on what language the actual message is sent in, it, Siri will read it to you in these supported languages down here. So anywhere from Arabic, all the way to Turkish and everything in between. So Siri adding this from an accessibility standpoint is awesome. So Siri will read it to you in Finnish or in French or in German or in Korean or in Malaysian. So bringing that over to iPadOS 17.4, I thought was a big one because again, I like to have a lot of the dictation stuff happening more so on my iPad than I do on my iPhone. 
But now to round this thing off, let's talk about actual battery life on the iPad. I am using the M1 iPad Pro, the baseline model one, so you guys are, have a reference or a sense of reference of what I'm looking at here. So the battery is relatively old, and you can see that I don't use the best battery practices to begin with, but over the last 10 days, an hour and 13 minutes of screen on time, if I go on a day right here, so screen time is two and a half hours, when I'm using about 100% of my battery. Again, I use very intense tasks, so LumaFusion and USB-C accessories, because I'm using an external SSD, as well as actually editing the video in real time, of course. So if I'm editing a video with an external SSD, I get maybe three hours, four hours max of screen on time without needing to plug in. And again, that's not great. But then we have a day right Right here where I'm using three hours of screen on time with about 75% battery. So depending on what you use your iPad for, again, my iPad is not following the best battery practices. And again, I wish Apple brought over all the new 17.4 updates to the battery section to iPadOS 17.4, because as of right now, only iOS has all the new battery cycle information that the iPad does not have. But that is what we got from a battery life standpoint. I'm just excited for new iPads that hopefully are coming sooner rather than later. But let's finish up this video, everybody. So we'll just about do it for this video, everybody. As you saw, most of the major updates, especially from a legislative standpoint, came with iOS 17.4 and what can be done with the iPhone over there in the EU. But we did get some trickle down features like the transcription on Apple Podcasts and things like that, as well as new emojis, which I thought was a great new addition with 17.4. But now I'm just looking forward to what Apple gives us with maybe an iPad OS 17.5, as well as maybe a new iPad coming real soon over the next maybe week or so. But that remains yet to be seen. Definitely stay subscribed because if a new iPad does release you already know that i'm gonna be fully on it and i'm gonna get a fully loaded version of that thing because i believe for me it's time to get a brand new ipad but that's gonna do it for this video everybody if you made it to the end leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so i know you made it to the end and leave a comment down below of what your favorite feature to ipad os 17.4 was mine probably has to be the phoenix emoji but teach their own but that's gonna do it everybody if you want to watch some more ios ipad os mac os vision os or maybe even some watch os content click on one of these videos right here and until next time i'm fernando and i'm out of here, everybody Peace.